Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be reviewing Chanel's Haute Couture Spring Summer 2023 collection designed by Virginie Via. This video uh, is filmed in front of my tier two members and patrons. It is filmed live in front of them, so join me on Patreon or become a YouTube member today to gain access to special filming before the videos hit uh, my channel, special filming in the live pre-shows, which are exclusive to my tier two members and patrons. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, push the join button and also push the notifications bell because YouTube is a mess if you don't do it. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to cue in my wonderful code chatters in just a second. Let me just first review the video. You guys keep commenting in the uh, chats and I'm gonna be reading your comments as we go along. Mind you, this video is taken directly from the Chanel website, uh, from the Chanel YouTube channel, pardon me. So it falls under fair use. We will be reviewing a video from their YouTube channel. I've just changed the music uh, to copyright free music. Not that their music was any good, to be perfectly honest with you. The music they chose did not fit the collection whatsoever anyway. So, but yeah, anyway, let, let's watch it and see how this goes. I have my crop ready. <laughs> My little friendly, my 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 trusty friend, my Hermes crop, uh, is here to judge. Let's see. All right, spring summer twenty twenty three. Haute couture, darling. So it's not the first time we're in this location. I think for Chanel, uh, Virginie collaborated with an artist uh, here, Xavier Vailhan. And I'm like, Cha, you got clients spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions a year for haute couture, and then you present a show in paper mache. All right. Yeah, way to, you know, and I get it, art, sure. But I mean, we're talking literally animals in cardboard and um, plywood. Let that sink in, okay? The Carl would have never let... <laughs> this already is giving me... Chanel wanting to be at the crocodile. Like, what the hell? Okay, the dogs. Debbie says, ooh, dinosaurs. It looks like a crocodile to me, not like a dinosaur. And then these guys, like, bringing in these things. The fish in the center looks like a beehive. Okay, and now the bird opens up. And then here, the main... Okay, what's her name? She's Kramer Kram or whatever her name is. She has been Chanel's go-to model for quite some while now if i came to chanel she would be together with <laughs> with kristen stewart and pharrell the first to go okay uh because really i'm so sick and tired of these faces uh, her too with that frowny face can't cannot stand her um a trojan horses says han yeah it reveals like are we insipid in some way so anyway but the clothes okay so we have these light garments uh, the hats really make it look ridiculous. That little kind of Mad Hatter meets Magician vibes. I'm like, where's the magic here? If you're going to have a Magician's hat or, you know, in any sort of way, a top hat, you better deliver. Otherwise, why even bother? But anyway, not that I don't like the colors. I think the color palette is beautiful for summer. Beige, light hues, sandy hues. Sure, it's very Chanel. I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. So the clothes, why not? Do the clothes give me haute couture vibes? No. It looks like a relatively expensive Pret-a-Porter collection. Um, oh my God, she turned the bibs into dogs now? Girl. Absolutely no. No. And it's like a corgi or whatever they're called, like the, the Queen Elizabeth used to have, all those. I'm like, oh, what sort of... I don't care if somebody who works for Chanel lo loves these dogs and it's like a tribute. I know that Carl had a cat and a choupette and then everything was made with cats. Like, I, I really don't care for your cat. I don't care for your dog. I'm not going to spend $200,000 on a freaking outfit to have your freaking dog as a bib on my jacket. I really don't care. Also, if you're connecting the corgis, whatever they're called, with aristocracy, I'm like, oh, that's a very snotty way of kind of look we can afford it we are aristocratic you know we got this dog that's a symbol really don't like that at all i'm also not a big fan of these shorts mini skirt aka short because for the ladies it makes it really hard to take them off to pee and all that stuff just 
Plus, Coco Chanel never liked showing the knee. She would always cover the knee, so this is kind of disrespectful to Coco. Now, because they know, Chanel knows that they have a lot of clients from the Middle East, they're gonna show us relatively soon a lot of clothes that also cover the body fully. They're not dumb. They know where their money comes from. So they're gonna make a lot of clothes, not because Virginie is inspired. No, it's because they're like, honey, make these long because our clients come from certain countries where the body has to be covered, okay? So they know what they're doing. Don't think that all of this is just genius at work. No, this is about calculating exactly what they can sell to maximize profits, not to maximize expression of genius creativity. Hence why we don't see any creativity in these collections since a while now. But don't you worry, because what does this mean? This doesn't mean, oh my, I'm okay, here with the bibs. Why does she always do these? Now this is the bib that's kind of lower down. I, for the love of me, I don't know why Virginie Via is so obsessed with bibs. It, 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 but anyway, back to the conservative aspect of Chanel. This is a beautiful piece, by the way. Another bib! Woman, stop it with the bibs! Oh my god. Anyway, so having a conservative look for the Haute Couture collection is not something that I'm against. Listen, Coco Chanel, when she was alive, obviously she only did Haute Couture, not Prêt à Porter. She would clothe people who had the money. They would be politicians, they would be rich people. There you go. You see what I mean? We're covering up the body more and more because they know. They know who their clients are. Um, and so this conservative aspect of being dressed by an haute couture maison like Chanel makes sense. I'm fine with their haute couture being conservative, not being experimental. Look at the terrible fit, those buttons in the back. Terribly, they, they, they don't flow nicely. They're kind of stiff and they shift like that. This is a beautiful twist here. But again, haute couture, no. No, I don't see it. So, as I was saying, having something not creative, just being nicely executed, is fine for me from Chanel Haute Couture. I don't mind it. But at least, if you're gonna really charge me half a million dollars for this outfit, at least offer me something more so that I can have the feeling that I've actually spent my money for something that's worth it. Because this doesn't look like it's worth it. Especially because the show looks so cheap with paper mache and plywood, right? And also, uh, most of these models, right, come out of these animals. It looks like they're coming out of a porta potty. And the funniest thing <laughs> you're gonna see from time to time, like, not all of these animals have opened up yet. Some models are inside of these plywood or paper mache animals. And there! <laughs> <laughs> she's been in there for like 10 minutes, okay? She's been dressed in makeup inside of the butt of the fish for 10 minutes with her inverse bib. Here's another, this is the inverted bib. Oh my God. She's been in there for 10 minutes, you guys. She came out of the fish. <laughs> she's like, I could not breathe in there. What's going on? And let me tell you, there's a certain moment when, um, okay, here's their token model, the one that's the only one that looks normal size, but you know, for Chanel standards, she's considered chubby. She lost weight, by the way. This is the first time that they've styled her. They hid her body. This is the first time that I see her dressed by Chanel and I'm like, yeah, this is okay. Why is it okay? Because they completely hid her body. They don't know how to do her. Look, she opened this up. She's like, she's like, girl, I'm done. Look at, and there's the, the guy, the guy behind <laughs> <laughs> this, he's like, okay, open the door for her. He was in there with her for 10 minutes in the darkness while she was ready to get out. You guys, this is embarrassing. And the guy's like crouching, like nobody saw me. Uh, we saw you. I'm sorry. We saw you. And uh, the, that girl and him are like, are like stuck in that, in the butt of an animal in paper mache. Um, for 10 minutes and then they come out? Girl, really, this is not it, Virginie. Uh, okay, now I'm loving this textile. Let me tell you why. This is one of the last, this Lurex type of vibe. It's very Coco in her last years. I'm very fond of Chanel's late 60s 
creations. She experimented a lot with lyrics and a lot with synthetics, and she did a lot of these colorful, sparkly organzas and lyrics combined together. So when Virginie takes those out of the archives and kind of redoes them, I'm all for it because Carl did not used to do a lot of those. Carl, Carl was not so much into Chanel's later years. I personally am. So I personally am very happy when I see uh, any dress that is covered up with a lot of that sparkly gold lame or rosé or a yellow um, pinky hues, uh, red gold, copper golds, that kind of late 60s vibe. Love that. And I think um, we we don't see enough of that at Chanel. Now, when everything is, you know, black pieces like these, sure, why not? You know, it's a Chanel moment. Those hats got to go, seriously. This is an 80s vibe. Again, the bib is now extended all the way to the bottom, uh, to the waist. Seriously, yeah, what can I tell you? It just, it ain't it. Um, very heavy. You see how she walks and the whole thing is very stiff. It doesn't flow nicely as she walks. Here's Sanchez. She has been their fitting model for Chanel during the Karl Lagerfeld era as well. They utilize her also in the runways. Yeah, I get it. It's like a family, sure. For me, Miss Sanchez, I'm sorry. You don't cut it for Chanel. Um, now, you see how these buttons in the back, on the back, they're just always so stiffly done so they don't kind of flow, but they, the whole row of buttons moves in one go. And that makes it look very, very, I don't want to say vulgar, but not elegant as the model flows. Now the model, she knows how to walk. She's walking gorgeously, she's beautiful. The dress isn't fitted right. Those buttons are not doing her any favors. It, they don't make her body look nice. Everything is very washed out. Also, quite frankly, this entire setting is so lackluster. It's so washed out and blasé. It's kind of really sad. And then the fact that some of these models are exiting these plywood concoctions, it's just... And you best believe, I mean, they're going to bring in another animal. <laughs> You're going to see what animal they're going to bring in at the end for the bride. This is an interesting combination of layering different... I think these are... But she, look, she's skinny and it makes her look chubby. Imagine if you're not a size zero to be dressed in that, you're gonna look like a joke. You're gonna look like a little cloud, like a, the Michelin, the little Michelin guy. Okay, this particular little horny horn, horn moment up here, I find really beautiful. The embroidered little, you know, I'm, I'm not for pilettes in sequence. This one works, however. You see how the buttons, they go like this. They don't flow and that, that really irks me. Okay, look, you guys, you can't make this shit up. The elephant in the room, what are they trying to tell us? Like, they're literally saying, nobody sees the elephant in the middle of the room. And then <laughs> the bride comes out. I'm like, what are you trying to tell her? The elephant in the room, seriously. And here she goes, right? The bride... Whatever, looks boring. It looks like the bride is not wearing the dress. It's like she's wearing shorts and they forgot to add the dress. Love the embroidered birds. On th that's beautiful. I love the white birds on the tool. I love the white birds on the dress. Love it. But I just don't think that the actual dress per se is lovely. You know, it should have been longer. It should go longer down. I mean, it's a bride after all, you know, it's not like she... Anyway, here we go one more time. Actually, I was thinking, you know what? Virginie should have... If she really wanted, wants to be consequent about this terrible concept of plywood ugly animals that try to copy Hermès, if you want to do this, then you should be in one of these animals, Virginie. Why don't you, why aren't you that ugly bird? And then at the end of the show, Virginie, the bird opens up and you come out of the bird. Why didn't you do, you made your models do it. You made those poor girls stand there for 10, 15 minutes, sweating with some dude, who knows what they were doing in there, who opens the door for them. But Virginie, are you gonna come out of an animal at the end of the show? Are you gonna be in one of these puppets? Let's see. So the colors you see, they're all very sandy, beachy, simple. There's that one floral, but everything else is black, white, sand, beige. 
Uh, Audrey says, can't wait to see Virginie looking awkward as hell as always. Yeah, she's gonna come out with the Xavier guy, the guy who did these ridiculous things. Anyway, okay, here she goes. Virginie did not come out of an animal. As you can see, she did not do that. Like she made everybody else do. She's like, ah, find me how the models all came out of these animals. Xavier, living ferret. And that concludes the Chanel Haute Couture 2023 Spring Summer Collection. Y'all. Uh, Deeply Erring says, those birds on the veil and dress are lovely. God awful, says Debbie. Audrey says, can't wait to see Virginie on more of a walk for than usual. Oh, more of a walk than usual for her, for Virginie, true, but I think because she felt a little bit more comfortable because she was not alone, I think the walk was a little bit longer because Xavier was with her, or Javier. Uh, depressing, sorry, says KDF. Audrey says, she's doing okay. She's walking out with Xavier. He looks like he's holding her hand, but it's to keep a tight grip on her, haha. -ha. Yes, because she had Xavier. Oh, dun, 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 your guts to be kidding me. Is this a love affair? Is this a story? Because you know Virginie has a kid. I don't know if she's still married or what, but. So go away, Virginie, says Debbie. Listen, I know that some of my uh, followers and subscribers also check me out on uh, Super Deco Backup, all spelled together on Instagram, and my Chanel uh, dedicated fan account on Instagram called Decob CC, all spelled together. Some of my followers have, have said to me, Decob, I gotta love this show if I could afford to buy all these pieces, I would. So a lot of you really enjoyed the pieces. And I do believe after all the shenanigans of the show are said and done, if we really look at the pieces on their own, within that conservative style that Chanel sometimes used to have, these are okay pieces. They're okay. There's no innovation. There's nothing special about them. They're just okay, comfortable, maybe, maybe comfortable for summer. But... Do they warrant $100,000 price tag and up for a, tool, for a full look? In my opinion, no. In my opinion, this is at the most métier d'art. But a lot of these looks were very pret-à-porter. Listen, you can't do a pret-à-porter little string dress like the one with full of flowers, and then say, well, it's haute couture because every flower was sewn in by hand. I don't care, girl. I, I really, I don't care. Like, like, really, that's what justifies? Then print them. I don't care if they're hand sewn on. Then print them on a little, a little strap, a little strap, string strap dress, and, you know, make it cost $70,000 less because I really don't need all those flowers on it because it doesn't look like they've been placed there by hand, so it doesn't make it look more valuable. You, I suppose some people could say, well, if you know, you know. Yeah, but I can tell you, but we know, and we know that this is a joke. So step it up, step it up, Virginie, step it up. The dresses were especially disappointing. I can't see anyone wanting to pay couture prices for those designs of sweet things. Weird hats and shoes to distract from the nothing outfits. That's a really good point, sweet things. Katie says, I want to see the show without the big animals. Listen, you know how much I loved some of Carl's creations. His last Métier d'art show before he passed away was the um, Paris, New York slash Egypt. I, I have my, from the Métier d'art, from, from Gossons. We know how to pronounce it correctly now. Um, the scarab earring, the little brooch, you know, I have their platinum rings. Like, I love Chanel, you know, I wear Chanel, but I'm Chanel makeup on. But I'm like, girl, there's there's a way to do things. And Virginie just ain't doing, she ain't delivering. It's getting really boring, repetitive. It's always the same thing. Where's the excitement? You got to give us a little bit of excitement if you want us to spend that extra money for the dream. You know what I mean? Look. Remember this, the little um, beautiful snow globe that Chanel gave out to, you know, to us beauty VIP customers. Okay, they spend a lot of money in beauty. This has nothing to do with the fashion. This is Chanel beauty, two different sectors. But now this little tiny thing, right? You might say, ah, who cares about it? Well, 
it's stuff like this that kind of makes me dream in a way. You know what I mean? Where's that pizzazz? Where's that extra something, something? By the way, from my sales associate from the fashion boutique said, oh my God, Jacob, did you know that actually uh, the people that were um, our clients, fashion clients, that get extra VIP, like the VIP fashion clients that get a free bag, a free something, free this, free that from us, they come to us to complain why did they not get this? They all want this. Because this makes them dream. The free bag they get, they're like, yeah, it's whatever. They want the snow globe. You see what I mean? And the snow globe, of course, is cheaper to make than the bag. But my point being, you got to create a little something, something to make a person dream. Now, the fashion people who are spending way more in fashion, they're not spending a lot of money in the beauty. Well, maybe you should reconsider. But Beauty is much better in their marketing strategy in terms of how to create these special moments for their clients, um, while fashion is quite lackluster, both in terms of what they give you when you buy stuff, as well as what they give you as a freebie. Bear that in mind, Chanel. We can learn from this. Look how beautiful this Chanel number no. 5 snow globe is. I mean... And not even one bubble of air inside. You know what I mean? It's really well done. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And subscribe. Bye.